Okay, everyone, and welcome to Senator Dave Cortez's press conference to introduce Senate Bill 435, the Ending Online Sexual Trafficking and Exploitation Act. First, I'll turn to Senator Dave Cortez. Well, thank you very much, Tara. Um, uh, Tara Shukrishnan uh, is the voice you just heard, um, Deputy Chief of Staff here um, for me in the Capitol, and she's doing a terrific job uh, today as usual. Sex trafficking uh, with unwilling victims of all ages, including children, is a major issue in our state, and the internet is its biggest platform. 69 million videos, as well as other online child sexual abuse material, were reported in the United, to, to United States authorities last year alone. Content that is uploaded to the internet each day includes rape, child rape, revenge pornography, and other forms of sexual assault. Someone's private content that was originally consensual uh, can be shared, distributed, uploaded, and re-uploaded on third-party platforms against a person's will. It happens, unfortunately, as we speak. We hear stories from women, men, and folks from all genders and folks from all identities where photos and videos they took in private that were originally consensual are then shared and distributed across the internet without their consent. Let's be clear. Even if an original video or photo is taken consensually, to improperly share that content without a person's consent is also a form of abuse and sexual assault. That's what this bill is getting after. Websites are fueling and profiting off of this abuse with content reviewing billions, receiving billions of advertisement impressions each day. Today, along with the California Women's Law Center, local advocates and sexual assault survivors, I'm introducing SB 435, the Ending Online Sexual Trafficking and Exploitation Act to dismantle a billion dollar industry that is profiting off of child sexual abuse, sexual assault, and even rape. Other supporters present virtually here today are Community Solutions, the Audrey Pot Foundation, Next Door Solutions to Domestic Violence, the Enough is Enough Voter Project, and the Coalition Against Trafficking in Women. The Ending Online Sexual Trafficking and Exploitation Act is the first bill of its kind in the nation to tackle online sexual exploitation and trafficking, giving victims, including children, more civil causes of action against the distribution of naked or sexual photographs and video. SB 435 would allow a person to bring a civil action for damages against any person or entity that makes, obtains, uploads, re-uploads, or distributes in any form sexual content of them on a platform in which they did not, did not freely give their permission for this content to be shared. And I would point you to the bill language, which is in print at this time, uh, for the more specific definitions of when that would occur and when it wouldn't. This includes situations where a victim was under 18, content where a person of any age is coerced, tricked, or forced into performing a sexual act, and, and uh, photos and videos that are sexual in nature, and that are circulated in any way without a person's knowledge or permission. You may ask how this bill differs from current civil law. Well, a couple of examples would be that it adds a very specific dollar amount to what victims can sue for. That becomes codified. Uh, the time for taking down photos and videos uh, that are uh, actionable um, by this bill um, is very clearly defined. Finally, it allows for victims to sue for circulation uh, of those photos and videos that is not only uploaded, but re-uploaded and distributed by others without their knowledge or consent. By doing this, we create a powerful deterrent and incentive to get these photos and videos out of circulation as fast as possible. Under SB 435, once a victim is given notice that their rights are being violated, a distributor 
has two hours to take down that content. After that, an offender must pay damages of $100,000 for every two hours of online exposure or $200,000 for every two hours if the victim is under 18 years of age. This bill also requires that any online service that breaks this law must disclose this violation publicly on their website and give specific authority to the Attorney General to pursue repeat offenders. The internet should not be a free forum for abuse. Online rape or assault is rape or assault and should be taken just as seriously as any other form. Victims of online sex trafficking deserve legal recourse so that it can be eradicated entirely. Sometimes, as we all know, this can be an issue of life or death for the victim. It's time to put an end to human trafficking in the digital age. Thank you for being here. Uh, thank you for your interest in SB 435. And I'll turn it back to Tara at this time. Thank you. And next, we'll hear from Betsy Butler, the executive director of the California Women's Law Center and a former state assembly member. Good morning, and um, thank you for being here today. Uh, it has become clear that more needs to be done to prevent online sexual exploitation and trafficking. And the fact is that we simply haven't updated our laws to include penalties that match the timeline and financial scale of our realities in the digital age. We hear stories every day from survivors, children and adults, uh, and others who have tried every legal option available to them to stop the online circulation of their sexual assault or rape. Still, as the Senator mentioned, their photographs continue to circulate, circulate while websites rake in profits from monetizing this abuse. Even if material was initially freely taken, oftentimes the continued distribution, distribution is done without knowledge or consent, leaving victims subject to their continued online trafficking. Unfortunately, current civil law creates a blanket exception for material that has already been distributed by anyone else at any time an unfair practice for victims who have no legal recourse to prevent this content from circulating further. This bill will put power in the hands of those who are victims of online trafficking by providing them with sufficient legal avenues to fight their perpetrators. Uh, as you may know, February is Teen Dating Violence Awareness and Prevention Month. So CWLC is grateful for the Senator's efforts here, and we are proud uh, sponsors of the, of the legislation as mentioned, which is a key piece of the ongoing process to prevent abuse and assist survivors of human trafficking and, uh, and helping them rebuild their lives. CWLC also appreciates the efforts of those who have worked with the Senator on the Ending Online Sexual Trafficking and Exploitation Act including anti-trafficking groups, community-based organizations, and nonprofits that support survivors, as well as lawyers and other e legal experts who have represented victims. And we thank you so much for this bill, Senator Cortez. Thank you. Next, we'll hear from Ruth Silvertop. Ruth is a supervising attorney at the Catherine and George Alexander Alexandra Community Law Center. She's Legal Services Chair of the South Bay Coalition to End Human Trafficking and an alternate delegate to the Santa Clara County Human Trafficking Commission. Um, so go ahead, Ruth. Do you, oh, sorry, I didn't, you cut off for a minute. I, Today, there is a massive industry of online sex trafficking that profits from the distribution of naked and sexual photographs of unwilling individuals. And they're mainly women and children, but not uh, exclusively. Um, and they're served by agencies and organizations with which I work and collaborate, uh, many community-based organizations. This industry often abuses children 
uh, largely but not totally on the internet. It has not yet been stopped by any of the laws that currently exist in California, although the business operates through, throughout California on a large scale. The survivors suffer trauma, post-traumatic stress, ejection from family, stigmatization, shunning, loss of jobs and careers, plummeting self-esteem, eating disorders, and all the consequences of sexual assault, including suicidal ideation and suicide everything, but nothing seems to work. Um, they really want to get this material out of circulation. Um, many of them were children or they were adults who were forced or tricked um, into providing this material. And the main purpose of this bill, SB 435, is to empower these individuals and to stop this online trafficking. Um, Existing law has proved inadequate. The revenge porn civil law, for example, creates a blanket exception if material has already been distributed. Current California human trafficking law cannot effectively address the online visual sex trafficking of adults. This law provides a strong incentive to take the material down rather than foot dragging as is customary while the victim who was exploited against their will will continue to suffer. California law gives few per persons who are trafficked online through sexual photographs without their permission usable or effective civil actions against those who make profit from them. The requirements of the existing laws do not reflect many of the conditions under which these photographs are made and trafficked and their standards and exemptions enhance the power of an industry to escape liability for its exploitive actions. We simply have not updated our laws to include penalties that match the timeline and financial scale of our realities in the digital age. I want to commend Supervisor, I'm sorry, <laughs> I know, knew him as a supervisor, Senator Cortese, for his courage, principle, and dedication to the welfare of all Californians in introducing this groundbreaking anti-trafficking bill. I want to say in closing that when passed, this bill will be a model for other jurisdictions who take the sexual abuse of online trafficking seriously. Seriously, thank you. Thank you. And now we're going to turn to questions. So if you have a question, please use the raise hand function on Zoom and I will unmute you. And when you ask your question, please mention the outlet you're from. Okay, David, please um, unmute yourself. Yes, good morning. David Louie from ABC 7 News. Question, uh, State Senator Cortese, to what degree will this uh, address uh, cases of, uh, of cyberbullying or perhaps uh, sexting? Well, in terms of cyberbullying, I think, um, you know, unfortunately, one of the most tragic cases uh, you know, that we've seen in California, of course, was the case of, of Audrey Pott, where essentially a 15 year old was sexually assaulted. And then in, a, in effect, um, based on the kinds of definitions we're putting this bill was reassaulted by having those images uh, uploaded and circulated in various ways. Um, this, this bill attacks that uploading and circulation. It, it's exactly what it does. Uh, the hope is is that it will be um, a deterrent to that happening in the first place. But if it does happen, uh, provides a significant uh, civil liability uh, in, in order to get those materials taken down uh, while uh, presumably the victim is uh, being attended to, um, you know, for their own trauma. So, uh, so yes, it does deal with that, and it, it deals with it uh, uh, in the areas of the bill that that speak. Uh, particularly uh, to um, 
to minors, to, to those under 18 years old. Uh, I hope that answers your question. But I'm open to any follow-up questions. Senator, I would, it would, I would make the assumption here that uh, the case of, of, of minors, perhaps in the Audrey Putt uh, case, uh, it was minors who were, who were sharing certain explicit photos. Uh, they're not online services. They were doing it person to person. Uh, does your bill address person to person proliferation of these types of images? Um, we have had conversations with the Audrey Pot Foundation about um, possibly um, amending the language in the bill to to make it even more directly on point with uh, the kind of circulation you're talking about. I think um, that piece of it that happens when just one individual um, moves an actual old-fashioned photograph, if you will, a print uh, from one person to another. Um, we believe the bill already captures uh, with its language around uploading. Um, there's language in the bill that not only speaks to uploading in, in, in any definitional sense that you or I might be thinking of it, but also talks about um, any technological uh, transmission of, of that item. Typically, if a, a young person is has um, any person has moved a, a digital photograph from one uh, phone, for example, to another, it's going to trip or trigger the provisions in this bill because uh, there's been a technological uh, transmission or transaction um, moving that uh, from one phone to another. Um, what I'm trying to say, David, is it's it's pretty hard for that photograph. Uh, we can't think of a way for it to be on a phone that a young person then shows to another young person without it having gotten there uh, through a technological uh, transaction in the first place. And this bill this bill covers that transaction. It doesn't have to be a paid transaction, by the way. Let me add that in. That may be in, in part if it wasn't embedded in your question, it, it clearly would be, I imagine, a follow-up question. Yes, there's uh, online profiteers making billions of dollars uh, uh, off this kind of enterprise, uh, but you don't have to be making a profit uh, on on the transaction or the transmittal or the uploading um, for, for it to trip or trigger uh, the remedies in this bill. Okay, any other um, questions? Just raise your hand in Zoom and I'll call on you. So next we have Baronda Lyons. You can unmute yourself. Yes, thank you. Hi, I'm Baronda Lyons from Cal Matters. I'm curious, um, in this announcement, you mentioned that there will be uh, fines for um, keeping these images up or you will find them according to, I don't know the exact schedule, but you mentioned fines. Um, how have technology companies responded to the bill? Are they working with you on it? Um, are, are they uh, supporting it or, or is there some conflict there? Oh, I imagine uh, there'll be concern. Um, we haven't received um, uh, or had a lot of dialogue thus far, you know, with technology firms. One of the things that this bill requires are, are very clear notice requirements all the way around. So. Uh, one of the things that tends to be absent right now from online platforms in general um, is um, clear clear notice or a clear description of, of how to make a claim. Uh, and, you know, one of the things we learned in, in speaking to uh, the folks over at the Audrey Pott Foundation, including the Pott family, um, and, and I would certainly defer to them for specific examples, is the frustration, um, the frustration that, that folks have in going to an online platform um, and even being able to determine at all a, a human being to talk to. Um, it is, uh, it's not, it's not only not clear, uh, but generally just not evident. Um, and, and frankly, that occurs with consumer transactions, as many people know as well. Uh, the algorithm doesn't provide a clear opportunity for, for making a claim or, or putting uh, the online purveyor on notice that there's a problem. Um, so this bill changes that particularly with regard to uh, sexual exploitation. 
I'm, I'm sure we'll have I'm sure we'll have a lot of dialogue going forward though to answer your question. Do you think there will be much opposition to it, um, or, or you just you don't know? Well, you know, I, I would expect that there'll be uh, concerns that we'll have to flesh out. Um, we'll certainly be, be willing to to listen to uh, issues regarding any kind of practicality. But the fact of the matter is, I would be I'd be taken aback if there's uh, any uh, legitimate online platform out there um, that is willing to say that this kind of behavior um, should be should be continued uh, status quo. Uh, the status quo is not acceptable. Uh, you know, I, again, I, I just can't imagine uh, anyone of representing Silicon Valley, myself, anyone uh, from the technology sector coming forward and saying, uh, you know, that this doesn't, this kind of legislation doesn't need to occur. Uh, there has to be remedies for this. Um, and, and I think uh, people who are, um, have any kind of, of a moral compass whatsoever, uh, representing uh, both individuals and the corporate world are going to come forward and say, uh, this is the kind of thing that needs to be done. Uh, again, as with any kind of legislation, if there are uh, practical details, for example, on how to best put people on notice, uh, we're all ears. Um, but but we can't let this continue. Okay. Thank you. Next we have Al next we have Alden Styles. Hi, this is Aldon Thomas Styles with California Black Media. Uh, my question is, is there any language in this bill that provides victims who maybe can't afford legal representation um, any assistance to pursue a legal course of action against their abusers? No, that's a great point. And as, as we all know, uh, the availability of effective assistance of counsel uh, for civil and, you know, criminal matters is, is, is generally lacking, you know, here in California and, in, and across the 50 states, um, you know, I'm not sure that the bill can uh, dictate that particularly, but we'll certainly take a look at that. Uh, at a minimum, um, you know, we're going to need the help, um, particularly from uh, the pro bono bar, uh, from, from folks, um, you know, who, as an attorney myself, I would say, who, who are willing to, to assist uh, on a pro bono basis uh, or through nonprofit organizations, um, legal aid, uh, and so forth um, to take some of these cases. But again, you won't have to be a lawyer um, to, to put the online platform on notice uh, that um, they um, are the purveyor of, of photographs or videos that run afoul of this law. We, we fully intend in the legislation, uh, the bill itself speaks to that um, we fully intend to make the notice process um, as, as simple uh, as it can be uh, for any lay person to use, in, including uh, the parents or guardians of, of a young person who's victimized. Okay, so this is um, the last call for questions. I don't see any other raised hands. I'll just give it a couple moments here. Okay, I see one hand um, from Bay City News. So you can go ahead and ask your question. Hi, yes, this is Jenna Cotta from Bay City News. I just wanted to clarify some things. So from my understanding, there is a $100,000 fine for um, an online platform who keeps the that keeps the video up for two hours after they've been notified about that video or image. Is there a similar fine for someone who sends a text message or um, puts it on their own personal Facebook account or something like that? Yeah, the bill deals with any, essentially any technological transmission of, of a photo or video that's actionable. Uh, so it's, it's, this isn't solely going after online platforms. The online platforms, of course, as we noted in the remarks, um, are from a commercialization standpoint, the biggest exploiters and from a, a quantitative standpoint, the biggest exploiters, both in terms of numbers of photos and videos, quantity, and then of course profits. 
Um, but this goes after one, the zero, act. Five, three, seven, yeah. two, seven, one, zero, 10, <laughs> and somebody wasn't muted there. This goes after the act of, of, of moving uh, that photo or that video um, unauthorized as, as defined in the bill, um, you know, electronically, as you just described, um, you know, through, uh, through a technological transmission. So yes, it would, it would cover that. It would cover that situation. Okay, so I'm not seeing any more questions. I'll, I'll just give it one moment before we close. All right, so with that, we're gonna close the press conference and lastly, just thank everyone, uh, including our speakers and supporters of this bill for being here today. Thank you. Thank you all.